Let me read you this, just a few verses from Psalm 48. It says this, Psalm 48 verse 9 says this, Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing love. Let me read that again. Within your temple, O God, we meditate on your unfailing Love. I don't know as you come in this morning what you could be meditating on. Anyone meditating on England winning this evening? Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm sorry. I had to bring it up. I had to say something. Come on. Come on, Harry. Score a goal. Come on, Raheem. Come on. Danny. Come on. Gareth. Sounds okay. Come on. We won't meditate on that. Hey, whatever you're going through this morning as you come into this place, why don't we make this a place where we meditate on God's unfailing love for you and for me. Maybe you've got this morning, thanks Dad, as you come issues that you just think, oh man, I'm not sure what to do. Maybe things just go over and over in your mind and how do I deal with this? Maybe you're not sure about the week to come and what it's going to bring. Maybe there are uncertainties, but how about this morning? In God's Temple. Amen. We meditate on his unfailing love. Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, I just ask for every person here this morning, as we have things that are probably playing in our minds, things that are perhaps preoccupying our thoughts, that today, July the 10th, 2021, would be known for us meditating on your unfailing love. For each other, for us. In Jesus' name.
everything like that. So uh, before it's said down, this has to be edited out, all right? <laughs> I just wanted to say once, all right? Come, I'm, come. Su I'm supporting England tonight. <laughs> I know I might be fickle and shallow, all right? I support Wales when it comes to rugby. But if I supported Wales when it was football, I would be very excited, wouldn't I? <laughs> so tonight, folks, I will be there watching television from 8 o'clock onwards, from before that, and cheering for England. Come on, Harry! Harry! Rob, you can have my shirt. <laughs> you please leave. That's great. Excellent. I didn't speak last week. Thank you to Paul for speaking uh, last week. Paul, Evelyn and I were away on holidays. Uh, next Sunday, Robert and his family are away on holidays. So uh, we're into that season a little bit uh, at the moment. But uh, four days ago when I, when I spoke, I started to speak about the now journey. The now journey of the Christian life. And we said how so many Christians you know, look back to past days and somehow or other, you know, there's nothing today that can measure with that which was. We, we quote it, didn't we? Mary Hopkins. Those were the days, my friend. We wish they never end, ended, you know. And on the other end of the scale, there are, there, there are people who um, uh, look, uh, they're, they're always looking into the future. And I've got this thing, well, sometime, somewhere in the future, things are going to be better. And they're waiting for that day to come, and sometimes they reach out to that day, and in a sense, for some reason, it's as though as they go to grasp it, you know, it's gone. And living in the present is hard for them. Now, I understand that to some degree, folks, in the sense that, you know, um, fear, Stops us enjoying the present, present, doesn't it? You know, uh, maybe even guilt about certain things can stop our enjoyment of the Christian life. Um, a sense of, you know, condemnation, a sense of being unable to handle today's situations can make us very uncomfortable. And we realise that we're on the right journey, we're going in the right direction, but, you know, what we've heard about... Just now, today, is somehow or other the hardest of all days uh, to, to be uh, living in. And if I can just recap on a fortnight ago and say some of the things that the Bible tells us, God tells us, he wants to do in our lives today. Not just in the past or even in the future, but he wants to do them now in our lives. The first thing was, uh, in Ephesians, the spirit who is now at work in our lives. Folks, we sometimes see you know, great men or great women of God being used by, uh, by God and we you know, we stand back and we think, wow, uh, they must have got it all together. But I want to say, those people are people who God's spirit is dealing with in an ongoing way. Not just in the past, not merely something that's going to come. Not just yesterday and tomorrow, but today as well. God can use anyone in a sense of the one-offs, like he used that ass, that donkey, okay? But listen, if we want God to use us continuously, we need to be people who are allowing God to move in our lives. <laughs> right now and in, the, and in the present, as it were. And some of the areas that we said last time, that God is at work in people's lives now, in the things that we say. Remember Isaiah, no ordinary man, no, you know, uh, no uh, non-Christian of his day or anything like that, but a man who's a prophet. And when he had a fresh encounter with God, his first response was, I, whoa, I am a man of unclean lips. 
It wasn't as though he was swearing, or I presume it wasn't, that he was swearing or cursing, telling lies or telling jokes that he shouldn't have. But he knew somehow or other that the things that he was saying weren't acceptable in the sight of God. And the psalmist uh, says elsewhere, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight, O oh my God. And so works, works, our conversation needs to be acceptable to God. And I think God doesn't condemn us when it isn't. He starts to work on us and lead us into a position where they are acceptable in his sight. But we need to have that, you know, we need to have that heart. Lord, may our conversation be as you want it to be. We also looked at something else, the fact that um, right now, folks, not just are our sins forgiven, but Christ, when he died on the cross, dealt with not just the penalty of our sins, but the power of sin in our lives and over our lives. When he wrote the Romans, Paul said, now that you have been set free from sin, now that you've been set free from sin. Folks, the power of sin can be broken in each and every one of our lives. That doesn't mean to say the temptation goes. Okay? Not say the temptation goes. But the power of sin in our lives can be broken. Uh, can be broken once and for all. And the third thing that we said that uh, God deals uh, is dealing with in so many people's lives uh, at this present time and wants to deal with in our lives too is money. Is money really, really uh, it, it is, folks? And uh, there's that, those well-known verses that we all know from uh, Proverbs that they're often given as baptismal uh, promises. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not uh, uh, unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. But, folks, the next verse uh, carries on, and it says, Then, remember, when is then? When we're trusting in the Lord and acknowledging him, folks. It says, Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. We need to be people who encounter God in our finances. And we can. One of the things that we can learn is that 90% with God in it will take us further than 100% without Him. Amen? I'm glad you said that. Good. Well, let's just move on to a couple of other things that are now things for us in the Christian life. Ephesians chapter 5 says this, You were once in darkness, but now you are the light of God. Now you are the light of God. Matthew chapter 5, these verses are written. And these are the words of Jesus. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and praise your Father who is in heaven. Jesus, when he was here in this world, folks, said, I am the light of the world. But he also said something a little bit extra. He said, as long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. Jesus is not physically in this world at the moment. He has returned to heaven and we're not saying that he changes because he is the same yesterday, today and forever. But listen, the Bible does say, folks, that today you and I are the light of the world. And I want to say from this passage that we, that we just, well, just read to you there, we're saved to shine. We are saved to shine. We are saved to be seen. We're not saved to be shy. You and I are saved to shine and we're saved to be seen. And I got this thing. Can I say it to you? Shine, Christian, shine. <laughs> 
Shine Christian side. We, we always sing the song sometimes. Shine Jesus, shine. Listen, Jesus is shining at the same strength today as he has ever shone. But you and I might not be shining as brightly as we once were. So this is what I'm saying. If you want to know, if I even ask you, what did the preacher uh, say, to, say to you this morning? Is this shine, Christian shine? Jesus wants you to shine. We, we need to shine. Yeah, listen, yeah, um, you might be saying, my town, you know, it's a dark town. My place of work, well, it's darker than dark. And we could keep going on our country, our continent, perhaps. But listen, darkness does not drive out darkness. Only light drives out darkness. Amen. And you are the one, and I are the ones who are as light, called by our presence to expose and to drive out darkness in this world in which we live. I'm saying, shine where you are. Shine where you are. Don't curse the darkness. Don't curse the darkness. You don't need to do that. Just shine. You know, the darkness gets exposed. The sun shines outside today. It's a bit cloudy, isn't it? But above the clouds, above the clouds, beyond the clouds, right? the sun is shining exactly the same as it was shining yesterday. It's still shining the, uh, to the same degree as it will be shining tomorrow and the day after and the week after that and, 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 and continuously. The thing that sort of makes it not uh, appear so strong today, it's the clouds. And in our lives sometimes, you know, there are a few clouds around, aren't there? Clouds of worry. That, you know, somewhere rather doesn't, uh, you know, puts a, a dampener perhaps on us shining. Do not worry. Do not be anxious, the Bible says, about anything, but with prayer and supplication uh, and with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. If I was, if I was writing the Ten Commandments, <laughs> what would you think if I wrote the Ten Commandments? <laughs> If I was writing the Ten Commandments, I'd put in a, an eleventh in. And the eleventh would be, don't worry. Don't worry. Because worry stops our enjoyment of everything that you know, God has brought, uh, has, has brought uh, for, for us. And can I just also say, it's warmer when you are out in the sun. It won't happen today, but very often when we go out, after the service and our one-way system due to uh, restrictions and things like that. You know, we're out there in the morning and the sun is in the east. It's shining towards the west. And uh, if you go the other side of that sort of passageway down there, you're in the shadow. If you stand this side, generally speaking, you know, the sun is shining on you. And it's a lot warmer this side, in the sun, than it is the other side, out of the sun. Okay? And uh, it's, it's, it's just a fact, really, that is, isn't it? And can I say for us as Christians, folks, you know, uh, we need to be mixing with people that uh, are, are living off people who are shining strong for Jesus. If we are living away from people like that, we get pulled down rather than lifted up. Remember the story in Numbers, thir uh, Numbers 13, yeah, of the 12 disciples going, uh, no, not the 12 disciples, <laughs> the 12 spies going out to spy. <laughs> that was my deliberate mistake today, all right? <laughs> Might be some more, but the 12 spies going out to, to Canaan. We say a 10 man bad and a 2 were good. <laughs> Don't know if it was quite like that. But the 10 ca all came back. And they all seen the same thing. The ten didn't see something different to the two. The two didn't see, see something different to the ten. The ten came back and they said, God, we'll never take it. There are walled cities. There are giants. They're stronger than we are. We are, you know, we're grasshoppers. They're giants. 
They were right. They were right. But what they were right about was contrary to the promises of God. And the two were tapped in to the promises of God, not what they saw with their eyes. But somehow or other, I get the feeling that maybe one of the ten started off doubting his fears. Doubting, you know, doubting what, what God had promised. Perhaps he was talking to number two and number three, and you know that negativity spread. Because perhaps one person to start off with wasn't shining as he should have been. Folks, we need to be part of a crowd of people who are are of those who are shining for Jesus and experiencing something of uh, hope and expectation in the book of in the New Testament in the book of Psalms um, the psalm is said in the morning O Lord you hear my voice in the morning O Lord I bring my requests to you and wait in expectation and wait in expectation. Sad thing is, so many people pray, but they don't accept, expect anything. And then it happens. Folks, when you pray, expect something to happen. Expect circumstances to change. And as you expect them to and start believing them, it's amazing how they do. So my first thing is, now you are but now you are light in the Lord. Say, I am light in the Lord. Next thing. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 says this. Now, say now, now. is the time to wake up. For now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Now is the time to wake up. For now is this, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. <laughs> I want to say, folks, and you might have gathered this, I'm better in the morning than I am in the night. <laughs> I'm more awake first thing in the morning than I am last thing at night. Tonight, if the match would start at 8 o'clock, I wish it was starting at 5 o'clock. <laughs> By the time it's played, it's full 90 minutes. And then goes into extra time, and then there's penalties. I'll be sleeping. I have not it off. It all depends where we watch it. If we watch it down in the kitchen, you know, on the television there, well, no, I won't. But sometimes we go upstairs to the bedroom and we watch television in the bedroom. If we're watching it in bed, folks, by the time we're in extra time, I'll be gone. I really will have. That's me. I'm better in the morning than I am at night. And can I say, now in the summer, I'm even better than I usually am. Because it's light at four o'clock. Some of you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> four o'clock in the morning, folks, I'm awake. And Edwin says, you're not getting up, are you? And I said, oh, I'm awake. <laughs> you know, come night time, she said, oh, what do you want to go to bed for now? <laughs> That's our household. Uh, that, that's our household. It really, really uh, is. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, Jesus told the parable of uh, the sower going up and sowing seeds. Corn seeds, we'll say. But the story goes on to say, while people slept, the enemy came and sowed weeds, sowed tears. While people slept, the enemy sowed weeds, sowed tears. You see, there's nothing wrong with sleeping, is there? Come on. Most of us here will sleep for over 20 years in our lifetime. Based on, shall we say, 70, 75 years, an average life span, eight hours a night, a third of 
75 is uh, 25, you know, the thing will be our, our lifetime of 75 years, approximately 25 years of that where we slept, sleeping. Nothing wrong with sleeping, but while they slept, the enemy sowed tears. Before Jesus was crucified, the Bible tells us that Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he'd given them instructions to watch and pray. As Jesus returned to the disciples, it says, then Jesus returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you not watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Couldn't you stay awake and watch and pray? I think we all have the desire to watch and pray. But listen, the spirit is willing, but our flesh is so often very weak. Can I say, we need to watch and pray for our families. Can I tell you something, I was, we need to be watching and praying for our families. I was reading last night um, uh, a little thing from the Christian Institute about things that are being voted on and uh, debated at present in the Welsh Assembly in particular to do with children's education. Can I say folks, you and I should be watching and praying over our children. And they were saying some of the things, you know, that are being uh, changed and some of the things that are being uh, are proposed to be allowed in the days to come. And there was a one that was right there, they, they said, said about a particular thing about children in sex education. They said, no young children should have to learn about these things. No young child should have to know what this is. I thought, I don't know what it is. I had folks, they teach it the children. Maybe your child my child, if not your child because of age, your grandchildren, my child, grandchildren, our grandchildren. Yeah. So often, folks, we just let things be. We just let things roll. The spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. I want to say, watch and pray. If you were to just look at your, I, I, this is a little thing, watch because of what I just you're reading last night the things that are part of the uh, educational uh, syllabus we should be horrified about because of the effects that they have upon our families hey we should be watching and praying in our nation Laws that get changed. Very often, folks, they get changed because, you know, although we at it, don't do much. Let things go. And all that is really necessary for the, you know, promotion of evil is for good men to do nothing. Good people to do nothing. Is the time to wake up? Can I say it might be too late? I'm saying certain things. But that's for, you know, can I say for God's sake? Better late than never. Better late than never, folks. You are the light of the world. Now is the time to wake up. Light and waking. I linked. <laughs> okay, late and waking. I linked. Really, really. Uh, back to our little passage.
passage and we come to a conclusion in Matthew chapter 5 where it starts to talk about a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. In other words, folks, when we do life together, when we do life together, rather than individually, the light shines that much brighter. You might think, well, it's easier doing life together. Well, sometimes it is. Can I also say it's sometimes harder to do life together? <laughs> harder doing life together sometimes than it is doing things, you know, on our own. On, 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 um, doing things, life together is important, it's essential. That was the final session of Alpha this week. The importance of church, the importance of the, the, the local church. And Henry Ford once said this, Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Thinking together is unity. Working together is success. And you know, it's often when we start working together that it gets harder. Church life, Christian life. But that's, folks, when God uses one another to mature us. Not to, uh, not that we remain some sort of spoiled individuals used to having our own way. But that we come together as part of the maturing process that God has for us. Let's start. The Spirit who is now at work in us now that you have been set free from sin and sin's power, now that we can begin to experience and encounter God in our finances, now we are the light of the world, not when I'm older or when I'm more mature, now I am, you are the light. Well, now is the time to wake up. And a city set on a hill cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. Shine, Christian 